All right, we are live. And let's see if we have folks coming in. It does look like we are recording too for everybody out there. We have some folks joining us. Hello, good morning, everybody. We're gonna give it just a few seconds. So everyone who wants to join us this morning can get into our little conference room here. All right, Commissioner, I think you can probably go ahead. Great, thank you, Michelle. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first community conversation. Uh, this one being our Wellington Waverly Buckeye community conversation uh, for the new year 2021. Uh, appreciate the folks that are participating and I'm really pleased that uh, <clears throat> Commissioner elect Jody Shaddock McNally uh, is also joining us. So with that, we'll let Michelle explain a little bit about the Zoom. I know we have at least, it looks like we have at least um, uh, six attendees at this point, and, and that's great. And I know one of them is my uh, in CSU, CSU intern. So hello, Kylie, she's out there somewhere. But Michelle, would you um, would you give us the, the information about the Zoom well, meeting? Uh, yeah. Of course, Commissioner. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Kai. Um, and everybody else joining us, thanks for being here this morning. Um, happy January 7th. So I know there are some people on here who don't regularly join us. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the platform we use today and how you can be involved in the meeting this morning. Um, you'll notice we're using Zoom, obviously, but this might be different than the Zoom you're used to using for work or, or with your relatives. Um, we are using Zoom webinar and we use the Zoom webinar platform for one reason in particular and it's safety. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard about Zoom bombings in the past. Um, and so what Zoom webinar does is allow for there to be a way for me to make sure that nobody sends out a link. So typically you'll see a chat box in the bottom corner. You'll notice there's not a chat box. There's something called a Q&A box. So if you have questions as you're going along, please feel free to um, put your questions in the Q&A box and we'll go ahead and we'll ask those out. We'll read them out loud for you. Um, really the reason we use that Q&A box is to make sure that someone can't send out a link that maybe goes to a, a website that puts ransomware on your computer or some kind of um, virus or, or bug. Um, so that's why we use that Q&A box instead of the chat box. You will notice actually, um, I have access to a chat box where I can chat to you guys, but you can't chat to me. Sometimes I send out links there, but um, for most of our communication purposes, please use the Q&A. Even if you don't have a question, sometimes people like just to give, you know, running commentary on what's going on use that Q&A box and I'll, I'll put it out there for everybody to see. Um, there's there's no filtering by me other than I'm making sure there's not a link um, that, that could hurt comp people's computers. Um, and then for those of you that have called in, I do see we have a call-in viewer. Um, we do have a way for you to participate as well. Um, and so what you wanna do if you want to talk, um, hit star nine on your phone and that'll let me know that you want to speak today. Um, and I'll go through and, and um, walk you through how you can speak. For everybody else, you don't have to use the Q&A box. Um, what we can do is what you, there's a raise your hand feature. You'll see it at the bottom of your screen. If you wanna talk to us, you know, like normal people talk, um, go ahead and just hit that raise your hand button. And that'll let me know that you're wanting to speak. And then I'll kind of walk you through the process of how to speak. You will eventually have to unmute yourself. You don't see the mute button now, but I'll, I'll enable it for you once we get there. Um, so with that, Commissioner, was I missing anything or are we good to move on? I think we're good to move on, Michelle. Great. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, I just have a couple of uh, opening comments, a few updates I'd like to provide to folks. And, and, um, and then if, if Jody wants to say a word or two, she's more than welcome to. Uh, but ultimately, the purpose of this is to answer your questions, uh, get a, a better sense of what you think some of our priorities should be in 2021 uh, in light of everything that's going on. So that's the essence of this particular meeting. I, we don't have any featured guests who are 
you know, can present on a particular topic. So with that said, again, I just wanna wish you all a happy and healthy new year. Uh, I know these continue to be interesting times. Uh, yesterday was certainly um, a day that uh, in many ways uh, you know, we've not experienced uh, in our lifetime in, in terms of some of the events in Washington, DC, but I'm grateful for the, uh, the checks and balances, frankly, that we have in place, albeit they may be imperfect, but I think they, they did function in such a way that uh, we were able to move forward and I hope we can continue to move forward. So in that spirit, friends, colleagues, folks from Wellington, uh, of course, the biggest thing is that um, as of uh, on Tuesday, January 12th, we will have the uh, swearing in ceremony and we have three uh, uh, newly elected uh, folks at the, at the county level. Uh, Jody, of course, one of the commissioners elect representing uh, District 3, which was Commissioner Donnelly, uh, which still is Commissioner Donnelly in that seat. Uh, Kristen Stevens will be replacing uh, Steve Johnson for District 2. And my understanding of the order of the, um, of the swearing in ceremony, the oath of office on Tuesday at nine o'clock, which will be broadcast and, and uh, Michelle can provide some information about that. But I think, um, I think Kristen Stevens will be sworn in first by the, uh, the new chief judge of the eighth judicial district, Susan Blanco. Uh, so it'll be Kristen and then Jody will be sworn in and, and then the new uh, district attorney elect, Gordon McLaughlin will be sworn in. And then at 10 o'clock, there won't be a reception. A lot of it'll be virtual. Be, there'll be some in-person activity in the commissioner's hearing room, um, but mostly it'll be virtual and broadcast you know, through our, um, our website and so forth. Uh, 10 o'clock, we start our administrative matters meeting, we get down to business. So that's gonna be, obviously that's gonna be um, a shift. Uh, recently, we did uh, decide upon the, uh, the various boards and commissions. Uh, I think most of you know that we have um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 26 uh, boards and commissions. And one of the responsibilities of, of county commissioners uh, is to serve as a liaison to one of those boards and commissions, including our, our interaction with the uh, statewide county association, uh, Colorado Counties Inc, CCI, and they have various policy committees and so forth. So we, we've already figured that out and that, that'll be one of the things that we approve or, or formalize at the uh, Tuesday morning administrative uh, matters meeting. A, a couple of other updates I'd, I'd like to share with you. You know, we continue to be, to work really, really hard. And going back to December, uh, we did, um, you know, on the capital improvement side of the, um, you know, budget operations and, and, and moving forward, we did have a, uh, it was really exciting that uh, Jody was there, but on December 16th, I believe it was, we had a groundbreaking ceremony, albeit small, uh, at, for the new behavioral health facility. Uh, so that's moving forward and that's exciting. And I think we can all agree that there's a tremendous need there. And, and so uh, the goal is by 2022, we will have a comprehensive, of uh, uh, inpatient and uh, outpatient crisis services, um, uh, withdrawal management or detox facility, et cetera. And, and that should be operational by 2022. Also on, on that, during that week, um, we, in Friday afternoon, December 18th, we had a, an even smaller in-person groundbreaking session. It was a bit windy. Uh, it was really nice that Commissioner Kathy Reynolds was able to join us, but we were out at the ranch and um, we were able to do a groundbreaking for the, uh, the updated ma ranch master plan implementation plan. And, and the first phase of the uh, construction work will, will be realigning Arena Circle, the, you know, that, that main road and a number of other infrastructure things. And then we'll be looking at uh, sort of step one or phase one of the, uh, some of the construction projects that'll take place out there. And then there was a, um, Another quote, uh, groundbreaking, although this one was virtual, and that was for the uh, transfer station. And of course that relates to the uh, 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 solid waste management plan that we have in place. And ultimately that connects with the intent to build a, a new uh, 
Larimer County landfill, of course, north, north of Wellington. So we had all of those kinds of groundbreaking sessions. Um, we, we're also working on the construction of a phased in approach, but our fleet services uh, a facility that'll be out by the interstate. Many of you know that currently uh, on Vine Drive there, the, the county has an operation, it's about six and a half acres, but that's pretty outdated. And some of those buildings are really not um, the best buildings to be working out of. So it took us a couple of years, but we found the location. And again, the, the money is in place, the funds are in place to do all of these projects, uh, but that'll, that'll also occur. And, if, and finally, I'll mention that on December 18th that morning, we did approve uh, uh, by resolution the 2021 operating budget for Larimer County. So that is in place. And then we approved a, a number of other um, uh, mill levy certifications and some other kinds of things. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, we're, we're certainly um, on Monday, actually, Monday, we have a work session at nine o'clock, I believe, and we'll be getting a really comprehensive update on our, our recovery work, our, our Larimer uh, County recovery work in relation to the Cameron Peak Fire and other kinds of things. And, and of course, um, I'm happy to do my uh, respond to any questions related to our current situation with the COVID-19 pandemic and, and how we're um, getting uh, vaccinations out. Uh, the fact that the school district is going to go back to in-person learning, certainly within the next month or so, all of the, all of the grades should be doing in-person learning and there's a plan there. And, and um, you know, also our, what's a, the biggest concern, of course, with regard to our small businesses, you know, we're currently in this level red status and, uh, oh, excuse me, level orange status, forgive me that we went to uh, along with a number of other counties uh, this past Monday and, and certainly can answer questions related to that with Jody's help and, and certainly with Michelle's help. I'm going to stop there and I hope that's helpful. And I don't know, Jody, if you wanna say a word or two, just to say hi to everyone and I appreciate you being on this, uh, on this, uh, in this meeting. And uh, Saturday we have our Fort Collins Laporte community conversation and of course, the goal is um, maybe by the spring, certainly by the summer, you know, we could actually resume our gatherings, uh, God willing, at the at the T-Bar Inn um, or, or, or someplace like that. But I think tradition uh, requires that we, we go back to the T-Bar Inn. So I'll stop. Jody, anything you want to share with folks? Thank you, Commissioner Kafalis. I just wanted to say uh, good morning, happy new year to everyone. I'm very happy to be here today. And I wanna thank everyone for their confidence and trust to have this ability to serve and uh, work on their behalf. And I'm excited to get to work starting next week. And I'm just here to this morning to listen and to hear from the residents in, um, in, this, in this Northern area of Wellington and Waverly. And I do miss going to the T-Bar Inn like I have been the last few years for your other conversations. I look forward to that. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jody, and, and I appreciate you taking the time to join us for the first hour of this gathering. So with that said, folks, I, I know there, I believe there are about, well, look, according to this, the, the, uh, the uh, participants, we have eight attendees. Um, if folks have a question um, or a comment or an insight, uh, I'm, I, we are all ears. We'll just wait a second. Oh, I, we have a, it looks like our phone, our call in person um, has wants to talk. So I don't know who the name yet, I'm sorry. But in order to unmute yourself um, for our call in person, hit star six and you should be able to unmute yourself. Oh, I, you might be ready to go. Yes, I am, good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, uh, this is Steve Sarno calling. I had tactical difficulties for whatever reason. First time it ever happened to get on the computer, but uh, but I did want to call in. Uh, good morning, uh, Commissioner uh, Kafalos. Good morning. Happy New Year to you. One moment. Hello. Thank you, Steve. Yes, thank you for the greetings and Happy New Year okay. to you. Sir. Yeah. Thank you, um, Commissioner. I, I guess I would like to start off by maybe asking and uh, making a request on behalf of so many people uh, in Lambert County, and that is just this, to see if you and the new commissioners would commit to making 
uh, every um, department in the county 100% transparent and open to the public. And uh, specifically, and most importantly, uh, the health department. Um, as you know, uh, the past almost year, uh, we, we've communicated, I've communicated with you, uh, great frustration and uh, about the total uh, lack of transparency and communication from the health department. And when you've got one department and one person that's totally, you know, actually unelected and not really responsive to the people that are making major decisions and policies based uh, that affects everybody and who knows how many people's future and livelihood with virtually no ability to talk. I can't tell you how many times I have tried to communicate through Katie O'Donnell very respectfully looking at science, asking about science, asking about reasons. And when they came out with who knows what policy to just say, this is what we base it on. This is why we were determining that you can't do this or you can't do that. And, and I, I just think so many people are frustrated, not as much because of what's going on, but more so because how they're being told to run their lives with absolutely no justification. And one last point, you know, if you remember right, uh, John, way back when, and I'm talking back in May or even earlier, I sent you and uh, Tom Gonzalez all kinds of data about the CDC and American Academy of Pediatrics saying the schools should never have been closed. Well, lo and behold, just recently they say, well, maybe we – should have done that. Well, if they'd have been more open and transparent, then so many kids that have been suffering wouldn't have had to been. So that, that's my that's my plea and request moving forward is that the entire county and specifically this department make themselves available to the people that they are making decisions lives on. Thanks, John. Sure, Stephen. And, and, and again, thank you very much. And my response is this, you know, in terms of the county as a whole, and I think your original request was related to, uh, you know, greater transparency in all of the departments. Um, uh, you know, that's something we can discuss with Michelle and, and county manager and, and others. I, I think we've made some progress in having greater transparency, you know, through, you know, a variety of means, including how we uh, work sessions and those kinds of things um, uh, are broadcast and all of that. But, but certainly that's something I, you know, I, we can take back for discussion in terms of how else can we continue to be more transparent. You know, part of our, um, our five-year strategic plan, you know, what goal number three uh, uh, deals with um, customer service and, and how do we provide services to folks, you know, with changing demographics and all of that. And I know that there is, um, you know, some of the objectives in there talk about, uh, uh, again, how, how can we do a better job, you know, and, and certainly making sure that people have access to the information in a timely manner. So that's my response to the first part of your question uh, that, that I think is broader, Steve, and, and it's valid because ultimately government, I think we have to do everything we can to be obviously accountable to folks uh, in terms of how we use the public resources and, um, and, and certainly more transparent. And I know that sounds like sound bites and all of that, but I, I, you know, I think we've made some progress, and I think we can continue to make progress on the, on the, on the uh, public health department. One thing I can say there, Steve, that maybe is helpful and, and, and a bit more specific. Um, I will be the new, um, I will be the commissioner liaison uh, to the board of health, and, and and you know, just recently, in fact, a Tuesday's, yeah, I believe that this past Tuesday's administrative matters meeting, on on January fifth, I believe. We did approve, the three of us agreed, on the consent agenda, uh, the, the um, a replacement for a person who left the Board of Health who resigned a little bit early. And, and so we took, we did that. And this person is going to be very interesting because he has quite a, a background, including uh, 28 years in the Air Force and retiring as a lieutenant colonel. And, and so he has a lot of experience, you know, interfacing in, in sort of unique ways with the healthcare uh, delivery system. Uh, but I will bring that back as the new uh, uh, Board of Health Commissioner liaison. And I think our first meeting, I believe, is the 14th. Uh, thanks, Michelle, on Thursday night. And, and those meetings are also, there is a public comment period. 
And I know sometimes that's been interesting how that's been conducted, uh, but I will bring that back to them and see, you know, what other things we can do to be more transparent. And actually, Steve, put it back on you just a little bit. Um, if, if you can be more specific, I know you've said, you know, the, the rationale for this and, and, and why the, you know, the decisions are being made. And, and so anything you can be more specific about would be helpful for me to have this conversation with the Board of Health, which ultimately oversees, you know, the public health director, you know, statutorily and, and all of that. I, I hope that's a satisfactory answer. I, I need to work in 2021. My, one of my goals is to be less long winded. Uh, my tendency is to provide too much detail. So Steve and others, please hold me accountable to that, that I would, when I respond to people, I'll try to be less long winded. Thank you. Commissioner, we do have some questions and a comment. First, I wanna to get to the comment. Um, Patty Garcia is here and she is the new town administrator for oh. Wellington. Um, she did say she was looking forward to working with everybody. So I wanted to point that out in case you wanted to um, say something to Patty. Hello, Patty. And also I, Tim Whitehouse is on, I, one of the attendees, I believe. And he is one of the Wellington uh, to town trustees. And I think um, John Gator as well. Oh, very good. I, I Yes, excellent. Hello, John. Um, yeah. We have a couple. Um, Lene has some questions. So let's get to those questions. First one, well, I guess they kind of go together. So I'll, I'll ask them simultaneously. Yes. What plans does the board have for improving affordable housing and expanding high speed affordable Wi Fi throughout the county? For example, can empty business buildings be used to house the homeless? Well, thank you, Lene, and I hope you're doing well. Um, regarding the matter of affordable housing, uh, generally speaking, you may be aware that um, as part of our five-year strategic plan, uh, the 2019-2023 strategic plan there are three goals. I am the executive sponsor of goal number two, which you know the the, the umbrella, the goal states something to the effect of economic, you know, access to economic opportunity and improved quality of life for you know all folks in in uh, Larimer County. Within that goal, there are four objectives. One of them deals with affordable housing, so that that's definitely been elevated as a higher priority to determine the ways that the county can be involved in helping uh, address the, you know, the rent burden and, and also the cost of housing. And, and I know that um, you know, it'd be interesting to ha have more interaction with the folks in Wellington because I know that um, uh, home ownership, you know, the, the, the price of homes, the median price of homes in, or the average price of homes in Wellington still tends to be um, uh, lower then of course the, I think the median price of a home, single family home in Fort Collins right now is about $457,000. So th there are specific objectives and, and we've actually, you know, we have done some tangible things, um, including everything from uh, putting in some of our general fund balance to help fund a, a non-congregate care uh, facility, uh, a hotel that was willing to work with uh, the public sector uh, that provides um, um, uh, a place for COVID-19 needs. In other words, persons who are homeless, experiencing homelessness, have an option if they are, there's a need to isolate, recover, or be quarantined, uh, you know, regarding the COVID-19. So there's an example where um, we, the county, uh, directed funds, uh, and, and the dollar amount is about uh, $80,000, that will be matched 75% by FEMA federal dollars uh, to provide a, an option for people who are homeless dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. More long-term, we have revitalized, well, I'll just say one or two more things. And I, again, I'm trying to be less long-winded here, less detail. Uh, I mean, suffice to say, we're, this is definitely on our radar. We, we've actually been working on this for the last, um, you know, the last, uh, uh, since we established a strategic plan, and also it's part of our land use code phase two update. But suffice to say that we are looking at, um, uh, you know, where, you know, where we can uh, invest county dollars, where we can, how we can update our land use code to be more accommodating 
uh, to creative options uh, you know, for affordable housing, smaller square footage homes. Uh, the end of January, we should be getting, uh, as part of the strategic plan, we contracted with a, a policy group out of Denver. I think it's Root Policy, and, and they've done a needs analysis, and that will help inform. Uh, we'll get the results of that uh, in, in the next couple of weeks, and we should have a work session, and that'll be public, transparent. Uh, but that'll help inform some other specific steps that we need to be doing. Uh, we have re revised our policy regarding what are called private acti activity bonds, where the county gets a certain amount of private activity bonds, which are tax exempt bonds, which are needed as, as part of the financing you know, for affordable housing projects. And last year we got, I think we, this year, we got um, like $5.2 million. And typically we, you know, we can allocate those for projects, but we typically issue them to partners like Housing Catalyst, who have a lot of experience. And so for example, the uh, affordable housing development in on Oak Street in, in uh, Old Town in Fort Collins, uh, 97 apartments from 30% of AMI, I think on up to 80% of AMI. <laughs> That's an example of a collaboration between the Fort Collins Downtown Development Authority, uh, the county uh, investing its private activity bonds, or at least a portion of them to help uh, allow for other financing, the city of Fort Collins, and, and certainly Housing Catalyst as the development uh, um, uh, part, part of that project. So there are a lot of things that we're doing. We've also revitalized what's called the Larimer Home Improvement Program. Uh, more CDBG community development block grant funds have been put into that. And that helps with home improvement, including manufactured homes or mobile homes, you know, for where people can um, uh, improve the energy efficiency of their homes and you know, cut down on their, on, their, on their bills and all of that. So definitely a lot of stuff going on with affordable housing and, and there's more that we need to do. And, and that I think that's gonna be a priority you know, in 2021 to figure out what other pieces of this puzzle the county has a proper role in. Commissioner, I might have missed it. Did you talk about Wi-Fi? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> I, um, you did not miss it, Michelle. That's why it's great to have you here. And I apologize. I, I guess I got caught up in the housing. Uh, That's okay. Portion, but but on that front, Lene and, and colleagues and friends, um, yeah, we're made. That's also, you know, that's actually part of our strategic plan as well. But even with Commissioner Gator, Lou Gator, uh, you know, that was a real passion of his, uh, you know, and that is to. Uh, uh, start the uh, what we call the broadband strategic initiative so that you know we've done a lot of uh, preliminary analysis we you know had consultants to do a, a variety of things and and in this five-year strategic plan that i keep referencing goal number one so goal number two deals with economic opportunity goal number three deals with you know, how we serve the public and how we can be creative and 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 uh, uh you know, and, and figure out issues of, you know, better communication and transparency. And goal number one deals with infrastructure, <coughs> excuse me. And one piece of that is broadband. And uh, so that is uh, something that we are making progress on. And, and uh, we, we, many of you know that one of the things we did over the summer and into the fall was a, um, a speed test, an online speed test. And that allowed us to um, update the data regarding parts of the county that are properly served or underserved or not served at all, you know, with uh, not served well at all with high speed or broadband access. So that's an example of something we've done in terms of a tangible project, which I'm really excited about. Um, we have um, we're using I think it's about one hundred thousand dollars of coronavirus relief funds, CVRF funds, $100,000 in a partnership with a private sector um, uh, provider, a uh, front range internet, which has been in our community for a long time. And we've identified some areas and ultimately we're working with the Cloverleaf uh, mobile home park, which is out um, east of uh, uh, I-25 off of just north of Highway 14 there. Uh, to install, um, they have a tower up on the northeast part, and they have this technology that allows for <coughs> wireless uh, transmission. Uh, but the, the goal is to get um, uh, families, households in that park access to high
high speed internet so their kids can do schoolwork and you know a variety of other things but that's one example and we're continuing to move forward with other partnerships for example Poudre Valley REA and others and and certainly we need to keep uh, not lose sight of the improvements that are needed up at Glacier View Meadows uh, I know that's always been an interesting situation with um, um, you know getting access to the um, you know access to internet that's my answer Thank you, Commissioner. And um, there's a follow up um, question from Lene is that um, will info on these initiatives be posted on the Larimer County website? And then she says in parentheses, so you don't have to talk more than you want to. I um, mean, I don't know if you want me to touch base or to talk a little bit about the strategic plan um, page that we have where we include updates. I can put that link in the chat box as well for folks yeah. if you'd like me to. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, so the short answer, and, and if you're, you're welcome to expand, but a lot of this information is posted. Uh, you know, maybe one of the, the things we need to do is to um, make sure people know that the information is out there. You know, I've been getting, for example, I, you know, the COVID-19 and the vaccination uh, matters. I've been getting a bunch of emails saying, you know, what about, you know, we're 70 plus, when do we get back, you know, when can we get access to back to the vaccine? And, and actually the, you know, the, the, there's still a need to do further update, but in our COVID-19 page, you know, there is some pretty decent information about um, uh, forms that you could fill out so you could be informed about, you know, vaccinations. And, and that applies to the, um, uh, the strategic plan. And we'll have a court, we'll, we will have a quarterly update of the strategic plan coming up. And also on the broadband, if you go to, uh, I, maybe you could post that as well, but there's, there's actually a newsletter that's, that was going out and, and there's a lot of information that, that says, you know, what some of the progress we've made on that and even to look at the results of the speed test. So the short is that a lot of this information is out there. Uh, it looks like we need to do a better job of, um, of uh, um, you know, making sure that folks know, you know, that that information is out there. And that's something to discuss with Michelle and, and Jody and others. I, I'm hoping to resume um, my accountability report, which I think goes out to folks. And I know Michelle is smiling. I'm sure Kylia is smiling as well, my intern, but um, that's been kind of on pause, you know, for lots of reasons. But my goal is to get that started up again in January. And that's another small way to get the word out that, yeah, we have this information here and, and, and how to access. Right. And, and one thing, too, I always recommend to folks is we do very regularly put out strategic plan updates um, and project updates in our monthly e newsletter that we put out. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to the, the newsletter, please go ahead and do so because a lot of times we give project updates um, in that newsletter as well, which will link back to the website. So where you can find that information on the website. Um, Commissioner Robert has a question, but he also has his hand raised. So I'm going to see if he wants to talk and if he asks his question um, when we get there. So Robert, I've given you permission to talk and now you're going to have to unmute yourself. There you go. I have unmuted. Uh, unfortunately, I, you just listen to me. You can't see me, which is an advantage for you probably. <laughs> I, I've often said that about myself, uh, Robert, um, no. but I, I, people have to see me, I guess. Well, John, uh, I haven't seen you in a long time, yeah. but my question is what's the present plan for Glade Reservoir? Well, the, um, the, the, pre the present plan and I, you know, there, there are some limits to what I can get into, uh, Bob, but um, uh, as you know, the uh, commissioners, I mean, they, we went through the land use process. I think it was on September 3rd, right before Labor Day, we had our, um, our final, the commissioners had the final land use hearing regarding the, um, uh, the NISP proposal and that was approved two to one. And then there was a, a, a what's called a findings and resolution that was approved by the Board of Commissioners. And I think that might've been about um, uh, October 27th or something like that. So those are two steps, you know, in terms of the county. And then most recently there was um, uh, an approval of what's called the, uh, um, uh, the, the NISP, uh, uh, what, what do we call it, development plan. And, and a lot of that has to do with Glade and the, the recreational aspects of it. And it also gets into 
uh, you know, the, the proposed relocation of Highway 287. But a lot of what that, that development uh, plan is, uh, Robert, is, uh, includes um, more details about the, um, uh, the conditions of approval that are, that are part of the, uh, the, uh, the um, findings and resolution. So those are the steps that the county has taken. You're probably aware that uh, there wasn't unanimous support for the NIST proposal, but that those are some of the steps that the county has taken. Uh, I think it was, I forget the date, but we did, um, uh, there was a lawsuit. And, and so that you know precludes me getting into a whole lot more detail, but there is a lawsuit in place that was submitted uh, by the, um, you know, the three groups, uh, including Save the Pooter, um, uh, maybe the I can't the No Pipe Dream, and then of course the folks that are uh, up in the in the area of um, Save Rural NoCo or something like that. So there is a lawsuit in place, and I'm not sure exactly where that is and and what the implications of that are. The last thing I'll say, Bob, and I keep going back between Robert and Bob, is that um, ultimately uh, the 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 Army Corps of Engineers uh, has to make a, a final record of decision, and, and that's probably going to be forthcoming. Uh, it's been said that they're the ones who ultimately have the decision about this moving forward, but all these things that the county has done have been really necessary as part of our 1041 permitting process. That That's my answer, Bob. So, John, the, the decision two to one by the commissioners is interesting, but it's not final. You're telling me that, or you're asking? I'm asking you. I'm asking you. <laughs> um, I. It, it is final, uh, pending uh, the proceedings of this uh, lawsuit. And, and, yeah. I, and it, I, honestly, Bob, I don't understand. You know, if if the if the courts rule in favor of the um, the, the those who have submitted the lawsuit, then potentially it would come back, depending on what the decision is could come back to the commissioners. Uh, but I think ultimately a lot of this rests with the Army Corps of Engineers and their yeah. final decision. So I, if I understand correctly, John, then the Army Corps of Engineers is an essential step in the process and they could or could not approve it. Um, they are an essential, I mean, they've been the, the, the you know, they've been at the, you know, they're, they're a central part of this whole process from the beginning you know, going back 15 years. And, and um, yeah, they are the ones. And once there is a record of decision, um, the, the project moves forward. And, and, and uh, but if there's a lawsuit, I don't know if that, you know, if that slows down the next few steps, but, but that's where it's at. And uh, that's the role of the county, you know, to date. And that, I think that's all I can say about. Yeah. <laughs> If the Corps of Engineers' recommendation was negative, that they did not approve it, would the lawsuit then become moot? I don't, honestly, Bob, I don't know. Okay. And, uh, again, I, I've, I, hopefully I've provided you with, you know, the, the steps that we've taken, the, the, the decisions, and there is a lawsuit. And of course, anytime there's a lawsuit, we have to be very mindful of, of yes. uh, you know, what we say and what we can say, frankly. And, and, okay. And, and, and then, of course, I don't know the timeline for the Army Corps of Engineers, but, you know, things do move forward. And um, if you go to the, uh, the county website and, and the planning, you'll, you'll, if you go to the NISP link, there's, there's a lot of information there as well. Okay. Thank you, John. You're welcome, sir. I'll, I'll put that link in the chat box as well, Commissioner. Sure. Thank you. Michelle. So I'm not seeing any other, um, hold on, sorry. Too many things to do at one time. I'm not seeing any other questions or hand raised, hands raised right now, um, Commissioner. So if there's something you felt like you want to talk about a little bit more, this might be the right time to do so. Yes. Um, thanks, Michelle. So I, again, I just want to put it out there to folks that um, you have an important role in, in, in informing us of you know, what's important to you. And, and I've tried to articulate you know, some of the uh, priorities that will likely come up in 2021. We have two new commissioners coming on board 
and I, I'm confident that we'll work well together. And you know, ultimately, we want to provide good governance, and we want to represent all of the folks in Larimer County. And I think most of you know that, uh, and hopefully, you can trust that. Uh, uh, you know, the closer you get to home in terms of being an elected official, the easier it is to focus on policy and building relationships, and and all of that. Um, and and so I'm. Uh, you know, that's one reason why I, I, I decided that I wanted to get closer to home and, and do my best to serve as a county commissioner. So I'm looking forward to working with the other two folks. Uh, they, they bring their, their share of experience. Uh, so, so please know that um, uh, certainly as of Tuesday, Jody and Kristen Stevens, Jody Shattuck McNally and Kristen C will have county email addresses and you're welcome to send them emails and uh, spread, spread the wealth a little bit. But, but ultimately we welcome your input on what you think we should be working on. Or if you have ideas on housing, um, you know, we didn't even talk about childcare, but that's another thing that I think we've done a creative um, uh, uh, approach and, and we're working on, on using some of our general fund balance for some of these kinds of things, which historically we've not done, but, but this actually came out of the, uh, the current board of commissioners, how we might redirect some of those funds to address uh, childcare housing, and even looking at the idea of post-secondary um, tr education training scholarships. So, so those are, you know, whatever input you have is really valuable. And uh, one thing I'd like to leave you with, because I think we may focus on this in, um, at the February meeting and, and, be, or, and or beyond. So one of the things that uh, I've been working on as a commissioner is this, um, what we're calling the climate smart, climate smart Larimer County framework. And we've been undertaking this mostly internally in the various planning areas, a little bit of community uh, or working with other, like the city of Fort Collins, a little bit, one person and our environmental science and advisory board. But ultimately we developed a um, uh, climate smart Larimer County framework report that will, Michelle, I know, is working with um, our Office of Emergency Management folks, and we're going to create a little bit of a website or a link where folks can access the report. Currently, there is a 10-page public document that summarizes some of the key recommendations. But this framework, the way we went about this, is to kind of establish a foundation and, and look at various planning areas, like, for example, energy, um, uh, land use, uh, buildings, you know, those kinds of things. And it goes on public health, um, et cetera. But the idea is that in each of those areas, you know, there's a lot of good background information and there are some recommendations, both as, as an internally as a, as a county organization and what the county might have as a role in the community to help look at adaptation issues related to climate change and uh, mitigation issues, especially as it relates to um, the, you know, the likelihood that we'll have um, warmer temperatures and, and, and more extreme weather and how that relates to forest health, how that relates to people living in the uh, you know, wildland urban interface. So the Climate Smart Larimer County Framework, uh, the next phase of that process, and I need to make sure that my new commissioners agree uh, is what we're calling a community engagement process. And if you look at each of the planning areas, you'll see there are quite a number of really good questions. And, and so the goal, one way of doing outreach is uh, we'll, we'll have a more facilitated or a more um, guided discussion uh, at these community conversations to get input from you all about what you think the county's role might be in, in, in these areas. Um, and, and that will help inform, you know, I, I'm envisioning February, March, April to focus on this community engagement process. And there's a lot of details that need to be worked out. A lot of that's in the report, but I need to work with Michelle and the new commissioners and other folks to figure out the most effective way to engage people to get input. And then ultimately, my hope is that that will inform a, a some type of climate action plan, you know, where the county um, has a more direct role in, in, in looking at these issues. So I, I wanted you to be aware of that. And at this point, my plan would be at the February meeting, we would begin those conversations. And then if there are other topics you wish to bring up or, or guests that you would like us to invite, you know, 
please, um, uh, you know, please let us know. That's all I have. Commissioner, we do have a couple hands raised right now. Um, would you like to get to those? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right, John Gator, good morning. I have given you permission to talk and you just need to unmute yourself. You're ready to go. All right, perfect. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, John. Hello. Hello. Good you. morning, Commissioner Kofalis and uh, Commissioner uh, Shaddock McNally or Commissioner Elect. Welcome to the team of local government in uh, hopefully what will be less than a crazy year that last year was. <laughs> but uh, so excited to have you being part Amen. of this. Um, I will be sending probably emails to uh, you, Commissioner Shaddock McNally. I know I spoke with our mayor, and I, I would love just to have a chance to sit down and chat with you. And Commissioner Grafalis would love to do this with you as well. Um, but I think the mayor would love to join us and just get to know you a little bit. One of the big things we want to try and do just here with our local government is work together well with the county. Um, I know we have a lot of areas and issues that we're working through. So we'd love to just uh, have a good working relationship with our uh, county officials. So hopefully we can facilitate that. Um, so I did have a couple of questions and concerns that I wanted to bring up and kind of did want to echo what uh, Mr. Sarno shared earlier about just transparency. Um, I know that's a big deal that I've been pushing for our local government here and we've been working towards that, but would really like to see that from the county as well and especially with the health department. The one thing I would ask of the commissioners to keep in mind, because as I understand, the commissioners actually are responsible for appointing um, people to the health commission. And I understand that there's a complicated process, but I think this year brought out a lot of things that just no one ever had considered. And I think one of the main things that we're seeing here locally is the impact that the health commission can have on local businesses. And one of the concerns that I see, and I, I don't know all of the members of the Health Commission, so I could be wrong, but from what I understand, I don't think any of the members currently on the Health Commission actually own or operate a small business. John, John Gator, that's yes. not correct. That, okay, that is not correct. Okay. Brian, Brian Del Grosso, a former state rep that I worked with in the legislature, okay. Brian Del Grosso from Loveland, is a member of the um, Board of Health. And, and okay. They're, forgive me for interrupting, but they're, no, no, that's great. And of course, he's a business owner that's been around for a long time and he owns a number of, um, I believe, Domino's pizzerias, you know, the, some of the, the um, okay. uh, so there is a business person on there. So. There is a business person. Okay, that is good. That would just be my request is that we really make sure that we are taking that into account because that's one of the areas that I feel that there was okay. really a miss and it, it wasn't just the county, it was the state, it was across the board. But I think we really missed on small businesses with this last year. And I think that, that our businesses, thankfully, are still hanging on, but they're hanging on by a thread. And I know we've been doing the best we can. And I appreciate the county working with us on CARES funding to be able to distribute that to the businesses. But uh, that's just, I think that that's just something for the, you as the commissioners to keep in mind as we're appointing these boards, this, that they have an impact that sometimes we do not foresee in the beginning. So just making sure that you're taking that into account. Yes. The second thing that I wanted to bring up that I want, uh, you know, we're continuing to discuss this. I do appreciate the information that was shared back with regards to the indirect costs. Um, and this is something that I um, brought up to the commissioners. And I know that there's been some communications with Patty Garcia from the county manager, but I appreciate some clarification on what exactly those areas are. But the concern that I have basically is because we Currently, um, all the residents of Wellington, we pay property taxes, just like every other uh, member of Larimer County. And as a portion of those property taxes, those go towards paying for Larimer County Sheriff's Office, um, Sheriff Services, just like every member of the county. Now, in our case, they actually serve as our local law enforcement. So then our residents here in Wellington are actually then taxed by the town of Wellington to pay for that, uh, I believe it's $1.3 million contract with Lambert County Sheriff's Office to, for them to serve as our local law enforcement. And as a part of that, we pay for administrative costs. I believe there's somewhere between 20 and $30,000 worth of administration costs that go into that. And unfortunately, as of this year, um, Lambert County Sheriff's Office is now being required by, the, by Lambert County to add an indirect cost to their contract to pay for additional um, county expenses. And the concern I have, while I appreciate those being broken out, what specific areas those are, um, and again, I, I brought this up before, unless the county can point to that, hey, there's a specific in individual that would specifically be fired if Wellington were to 
cancel their contract, you know, this human resources officer would actually be let go from the county because the only purpose they serve in the county is to handle issues specific to Wellington's contract, which I don't believe is the case because in the case of Larimer County Sheriff's Office, they actually have their own internal human resources and IT department that handles the things related to Wellington's contract and we actually pay them for that. <clears throat> and so the concern that I have is in, in essence, the citizens of Wellington are being taxed by Larimer County to pay for sheriff services like every other member of the, com member of the community. And then they are being taxed by the town of Wellington to pay for Larimer County Sheriff's Office to serve as our local law enforcement. And that money is going back to the county for that. And now in essence, Larimer County is now asking us is basically taxing our citizens a third time to pay for these indirect costs to the county. And so I could understand that if we were in Weld County, for example, and we weren't a part of Larimer County and we weren't paying property taxes to the county, but our citizens are already paying those taxes to the county to pay for county staff. And so that's something that uh, I would really like to see us continue to work through and get something worked out on that because that, that's a very big concern that I have and really it's part of my responsibility is to make sure that we're looking after the, you know, our citizens and making sure that it, for me as a government standpoint is that we're not going out and we're not continually just going to our citizens saying, hey, we want, we're taking more money from you. And John, on that really quick, I appreciate you sending me the, um, the, uh, the minutes, the, the packet, you know, the town board meeting where you discussed this matter. It was very helpful to see the breakout and what the agreement is with Larimer County Sheriff's Office. And then I, I assume you received my response, you know, which attempts to provide some of the breakout, like you said, of, of what those indirect HR costs are and how, you know, it, it was determined. And I know it still doesn't, you know, address your concerns about somebody losing their job, but it was determined both d certain departments that are, um, uh, you know, their sources of revenue might be fees or whatever, they weren't paying their share of HR related costs. And I guess that's why this decision was made to try to address some of that. And that also applies to uh, not just Wellington where law enforcement services are provided, but also the town of Berthoud. But we can certainly continue to have those conversations. And I, I think ultimately, you know, we should engage our county manager on, on this issue. Absolutely, and I, and I appreciate that. So I think those were the um, primary concerns. So just, I look forward to the opportunity to work with both of you and. Uh, like I said, once your email is up and running, uh, Commissioner-elect Shadok Mentali, I'll uh, shoot, send an email over to you um, and we'll work to see if we can get something set up. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you. Nice. thank you very much for your service. Thank you, Mr. Gator. I look forward to sitting down and, and uh, with you and others and having a great conversation and I welcome the invitation. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Commissioner, thank you, John, so much. Let me... I can only do one thing at a time. So you guys are gonna to have to walk through with me as I do this. Robert had one more thing he wanted to um, talk about. So Robert, I have given you permission to talk and you're gonna to have to unmute yourself. There you go. I can do that. Actually I have two things, Michelle. The first one is John mentioned this, this green plan. Could, could is, If that's available electronically, could you send me a copy? Commissioner, uh, I do have a couple folks that I'm going to send copies to. So why don't I just have Alicia send the whole thing out to everybody that um, is on the list today? Yes, and what you're referring to, Michelle, is the 10-page public document. Yeah. Yeah, we can. That gives you kind of the highlights, Bob, and and I oh. think that's a good starting place. But then, uh, hopefully, within the next couple of weeks, we will post the 80-page um, report that provides a lot more details as far as. Uh, some of the greenhouse gas emissions inventories, and, and also some of the you know, various recommendations and this community engagement process. But we can certainly, that would be great, um, uh, Michelle, please do that. Second comment, uh, John, you know I'm an old retired guy and uh, I'm, I'm available. So if you need somebody that is an old retired person of reasonable intelligence, ask me. The second thing is, John, I'm glad you're there doing what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate your your kind words, Bob. And and uh, uh, I'm an old, not retired guy, uh, but I 
you know, I, and I'll continue to serve as best as I can. And, you know, as you well know, sir, there, there are lots of um, boards and commissions and, and uh, you know, we try to get a, a good mix of, um, uh, you know, representing the different parts of the county, urban and rural. And I know, for example, there are openings on the, um, you know, the, the Office on Aging, the Aging Advisory Council. I mean, that's where, you know, the, the focus is on issues that affect older adults, for example, Bob. And, and even, you know, there are, uh, there, there will be openings in 2021, um, because I know you have a, a, a science back, background. Uh, there will be openings in 2021 on the uh, Environmental and Science Advisory Board. So there are lots of opportunities out Good. there. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And John, John, I'm an old guy. You're you're just approaching maturity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta move on. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. And uh I, I think um oh I know one thing I wanted to just say add uh, Michelle and Jody and others. I, I think Patty Garcia is still on. I don't know if she if she would be interested in offering some comments about how things are going for the businesses up in Wellington, in particular in relation to this level up certification program. And my hope is that a bunch of the restaurants and have applied for that. And, and I know we're, you know, it's, it's been, um, uh, you know, the applications that we've received and then the inspections that we've been doing, you know, we're, we're I think we've, by now we've probably done over 300 <laughs> or 250 inspections. But I would I'd really like to hear from Patty Garcia if she'd like to share how that's going up there and our our businesses applying and our businesses being certified. Although now, you know, the idea was that you could operate at a lower level. So if we were in red, you'd be at orange if you met the criteria. But now everyone's at orange. But the goal would be that um, those that are certified, once we get to a place where our metrics, our COVID-19 metrics show that we could actually go um, uh, you know, we can show some sustainability there, a decline for a period of seven days or so, then those certified businesses could operate in, in level yellow. So I don't know, Patty, is that anything you want to share about how that's going up there? Commissioner, really quickly before we jump to Patty, I know um, Commissioner-elect has to go. So I just wanted to recognize, um, um, I think she wanted to just say goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Michelle and Commissioner Kafaos for allowing me to join today. I'm very uh, thankful for everyone who has attended today and, and appreciate the opportunity to listen. And I look forward to um, hearing more from you and, and welcome Patty, thanks uh, for joining us today. And I wish you all and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Commissioner. All right, Patty, you are on top of it. I have allowed you to talk and you've unmuted yourself. So go ahead. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And thank you for the question. Um, so the uh, we, we have an incredible Main Street and Chamber program as well in Wellington, and, and we have encouraged everyone to be um, uh, to apply for that level up program. We had several businesses get certified um, prior to us, everybody going to Orange. So that was encouraging. Um, we have, I think, I think most of the Main Street businesses have um, been certified so that if when that change comes and, you know, to go from orange to yellow, we will have that opportunity. Um, the CARES funding was incredibly instrumental um, with our businesses. Um, we provided grants up to $12,000 per business if they requested there was an application process. So we we gave out almost 300, I think a little over $300,000 to our local businesses um, to support them through this time. Um, the chamber uh, or the Main Street program put together some signs for pickup and things like that, which were put along Main Street so bit people knew what businesses to stop at to, you know, to order their foods or to stop and pick up their food, things like that. So um, it has been great. And then we also got notification yesterday of the small grant program through Larimer County, which is being promoted throughout Wellington as well. We're getting that information out today to everyone. So um, really, thank you so much for all the support we've gotten from Larimer County through this, and um, it has been incredibly beneficial for our for our group of restaurants and um, businesses in Wellington. So, thank you, Patty. That thank you, Patty. That's good to hear uh, that. And and do you receive the um, our Larimer County 
economic and workforce development folks who have kind of been on the front lines with helping with this level up along with our public health folks. But they send out a weekly, just like the city of Fort Collins does, but a, a sort of an economic uh, update newsletter. Do you, do you get that? And if not, maybe Michelle could make sure you're on that list because there's really good information in there about you know, how to apply for this or that. And you know, the county will be applying for some of those state um, uh, business relief funds. You know, I think it's about $37 million or so that the, you know, when they had that special session back, seems like a lifetime ago already, but, but, but <laughs> yes. you know, there's money available for a, you know, small businesses, I think up to 7,000. There's the, um, and help me with this, Michelle or Patty, you know, there's the, uh, uh, the, the sales tax uh, relief uh, aspect of that. You know, there's money for folks that are involved in the creative industries. And then of course, there's money for addressing things like affordable, you know, people that are facing, uh, you know, difficulties with mortgage payments uh, in, or in certainly with rent, rental payments and then food insecurity. I, I just wanna make sure you're aware of all that kind of stuff, Patty, for the folks up in Wellington and the businesses. So Michelle, if you could make sure I could get on that email list, that would be fabulous. I am not aware of that. So thank you very much for bringing it up. I'm learning every day, I, every 30 minutes, I learn something new and things. So I appreciate the help. Thank you. And, and you know, Patty, that's great. And thank you, Michelle. And, you know, our director of the uh, economic and workforce is, is a fellow by the name of Jacob Castillo, a good, a good person, a very competent person who's been working night and day with um, people like Adam Crow, who is our economic development manager or something. But, but Adam is incredibly responsive and both of them are, you know, even on off hours or on the weekends, they will typically respond to, you know, if they get an email, uh, a, a question from a business person and, and they're really working hard to try to do whatever we can to, to make sure that we can get through the next couple of months and, and hopefully, you know, this thing will be in a better place and, and folk, businesses can operate more, uh, you know, differently than they've had to operate this the last um, six months or more. So, that's what we're that's what we're hoping for and adam adam has reached out to me a couple different times so um he's been he's been great um, answering my questions and things so um well that's great news patty thank you so much for sharing that and you bet i yes michelle is there anything else that um our folks i do not see anything um commissioner it looks like all of our questions have been answered and nobody has their hand up right now. So we might I, be ready to close, except for you. Yes, I just, I'm just <laughs> noticing that uh, uh, I think Cindy Peck is on the, on the uh, one of the attendees, she's uh, I guess in listening mode. But I know Cindy, one of the concerns you brought up uh, at one of the commissioner's meetings back uh, in December, I suppose, was the issue of the, the schools and the remote learning. I, I'm wondering if you have any insights or comments or at least, um, uh, beginning to be satisfied that we are moving in the direction of more in-person learning, uh, you know, in the coming weeks and and by, uh, again, uh, by February 8th or certainly by February 15th, I think all the grades will be doing in-person in learning. Any comments on that, Cindy? And then we'll, I guess we'll end it after that. I just saw you were on. And Cindy, you're just going to have to unmute yourself now. There you go. No, I appreciate uh, getting up to date. So thank you very much, Commissioner Kapalis. You're welcome. And and if you um, if you see the the, the Colorado and the there's a there's a good article. I think it's pretty accurate regarding the phases. Uh, you know the Puerto School District decision, and I think it applies to Thompson uh, Thompson School District as well. So there there are definitely um, uh, you know the, the younger grades will be moving to more uh, hybrid phase three. And then, and indeed, by February eighth, uh, the, the the goal is that middle school, high school, and certainly the pre preschool to kindergarten grades, all of those will be uh, in person. And then there are strategies for, uh, you, you know, uh, testing. There's there's these rapid testings that we're going to be deploying, and then ultimately in phase, what the heck is it? Help me. Phase one B of this whole vaccination deal. Uh, the, the goal is, if, as we get more and more supplies of the various va vaccines that are out there, Cindy and, and colleagues, that I think it's, it's expected that uh, teachers will have the option of getting the vaccination uh, end of February, beginning in, in March, perhaps. Is that right, Michelle? 
Yes, Commissioner, that is at least I, you know, I don't necessarily have the insight, but at least that's what I have heard is, yeah. is um, the rapid testing is is moving yeah. forward here almost immediately for for students and teachers. Um, and then um, vaccines for the teachers group will be probably sometime in March, correct? Well, great. Uh, so I, thank you, Cindy. Thanks for your due diligence. And uh, again, all of you are responsible for keeping us accountable and and we'll certainly bring back to the Board of Health about what else can we do to be more transparent or explain the rationale for why decisions are made. Uh, we do have a new member on the Board of Health. There are five folks, they serve five year terms. Um, one of them is, he's a retired physician actually. And uh, um, so we, we do have an array of, of people, uh, mostly with some connection to healthcare related stuff and certainly a, 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 you know, Brian as the, as the business person and um, all of that. So with that said, uh, I, I wish you all well, Michelle. I appreciate you as always. I'm glad Baby Yoda is with us still. We'll need, we'll need Baby Yoda in the coming, in this year. And uh, we'll uh, see you uh, in February. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.